Hello, fans of the Grim, the Dark, and the Future. Welcome to our second podcast. Uh, welcome, Johannes. Hi. Welcome, Engin. Hi. And uh, no last one wants to introduce me. <laughs> and last but not least, our charming moderator today, uh, Patrick. Hi. So, okay. Um, last time we talked about the version 2.50 changes. And unfortunately, Engin had to leave. So maybe just as a quick uh, intro to get into the topic do you have something to to add to what we talked about last time uh yes so uh first of all great podcast last time i <laughs> really missed something there so but um uh, you talked last time about uh the the changes and the the transition more toward the model range of um of Games Workshop. Oh yes, and yes, yes. So, so uh, I wanted to share my opinion on that one too because I really like that 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 idea. So it's still possible for everyone to use the models they want, which is very important, I think. But on the other hand, I really like the the Games Workshop model range, and for everyone who kind of enjoys the new models coming out there's a possibility to use these great miniatures on on this great um rules so i think that's the perfect uh perfect way to do it so yeah so uh, i really like that transitions and uh, i i think it's it helps people to get into into the the rules of of grimdark future yeah, for this I agree. It was just last time we were not sure about the uh, dwarf guilds on what uh, faction they were originally built around, and there we had one comment on YouTube from the from the user er nine hundred ten, who just uh, corrected us. It was uh, from Mantic Forge Fathers, so yes. the former dwarf. Guilds faction was built around the for Forge Fathers from Mantic. So, just to have a complete picture here. Yeah. So, close to what you talked about is about the support units, which changed to three models per unit, which is mm. close to the topic on the sniper squads. If if you'd like to talk about that now. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So, um, so from the arguments. Uh, you had last time on the sniper squads that they are re getting really small and squishy and so on. Uh, that's true and that's also correct, I think, for kind of the, the support squads. Let's take the example on the Battle Brothers have Heavy Weapon Support Squad or mm -hmm. how it's called. Um, I also always enjoyed to use that unit, um, but of course, in the past, also five Marines die relatively quickly but they were exp ex extremely expensive so with the plasma cannons i think five five uh, models were about 450 points yeah and uh, now with three models i can e really use them as a support squad bring them into the army if i just want to have a small units really with some firepower on the side and have my heavy troops on the uh, also uh, in the army and on the other hand if i really want to have a com comparable size of unit so i can just uh take a combined unit with, with yeah thick models. this is and yeah and that i can also do with the sniper squads i think we all can agree that most of the time you don't need more than six snipers to, to this is true this is true yeah them. yeah also well, um i think Maybe they, would, they would just wanted to prevent a um, super expensive unit by doubling on the support squad 10 models, all with heavy weapons. It's, it's just pricey. Also, if you want a comparable unit, as you said, you can just use a combined squad, and this gives you an advantage. No, it doesn't. I miscalculated. So before it was five models, now you have six with a combined, yeah. and you both of the times you need to kill three of them to trigger a moral check okay except, so except you have a uh a, a, a hero 
within the squad. When you have a hero attached to it, it makes a difference. Yeah, this is true. Interesting. Um, what I wanted to say, I don't know how it formally was, but now you can um, add a single weapon per guy and you don't have to uh, exchange every weapon they have so if you want to you can take a six squad support brothers give five of them like a gravity cannon the cheapest version and one or two guys you can give a laser cannon or something more expensive so you have like exposable bodies uh, for the two laser cannons you want to have and you don't have to give everyone the same weapon i don't know if it is that was the it. same before so okay. yeah. we're able to if... to give the weapons individually actually. okay that, that's different. yeah yeah but still you pay for the cheapest heavy weapon you can't have just um you know assault rifle, rifle. Yeah, yeah 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 uh, heavy rifle exactly so what i wanted to say as a whole i think it makes sense to reduce the number of models when when looking at the at the whole Grimrock future range and the model count to to reduce it to three, to to have them not too expensive to. Yeah. To use them even in smaller games. Exactly. And yeah. As I said, it it, I think it was the exception that you really took ten support brothers. So almost did, did nine hundred. Yeah. Did I, we ever do something like no. that? I think no. 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 Also, like maybe all support all support squads have relentless i think that's yes what, what's uh the specialty of them also the heavy yeah. weapons but relentless and maybe it's with common theme yes. yeah with 10 models relentless can be very <laughs> swingy so if you're lucky and you roll just yeah if you have a really good roll then yeah. oof, oof. exactly yeah this can't happen anymore yeah I think they're leaning um, on the swingy part with the relentless and rending and poison in, in general much on this. There's a lot of stuff which can be swingy um, in OPR, but it makes for maybe fun scenes in uh, but <laughs> some games. Yeah, true. It, it's and still it, in the end, it's still a dice game, right? So everything can happen. And it keeps it simple, to be honest. If you have a common, common kind of idea how the different rule works, so all are triggered by a natural six, it keeps it simple. So you don't have to think about, ah, poison was at five plus and relentless was at six plus, or uh, some are triggered by natural numbers, some are triggered by modified numbers, yeah. then it gets again more complicated i think yeah. to keep it simple and easy just trigger on a six even though yeah it it, it brings in additional luck but you it's you can kind of calculate that in, even though it's swinging and i tend to don't roll the six on <laughs> on uh rending <laughs> i have the feeling <laughs> yeah yeah so you, you just can't do it yeah yeah, it has to be it's, it's, hidden somewhere in the rules that you can't roll the six. <laughs> That's the reason we lose so often. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think we. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just wanted to ask. Uh, so, from the sports squads, I think that generally, we we kind of agree on it's. Yes. It's yes. Yes. Going in the better direction that way. I think so. I think. Yes. Me too. Hashtag me too. But but. <laughs> The, the topic you touched last time, would you like to address that when we are now at the support squads with the gravity yeah. guns directly? Does it make sense? Oh, yeah, we can we can quickly look into it. Just, gravity uh, expert. And yeah. farming moderator. <laughs> mm, gravity expert. No, it's just I liked them before. I mean, I, I have these uh, Games Workshop, Space Marine Centurion models, so I like to play them. I like the look of them. And yeah, they made it into One Page Rules 2. Here they are called Heavy Exosuits. And they happen to have Gravity Cannons too. So there it's called Twin Gravity Cannon, and I think it was 12 shots before, all with rending. So I like that. Like, 
when you're lucky, you can really kill something. If you're not lucky, then... But it's a lot of dice to roll. And I mean, we agree that... I, I remember very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now they... Talk, change... We are talking about the twin gravity cannon, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Heavy okay. hmm? exactly. And now they changed it to two attacks, still rending, but blast three instead. So yeah, it's a completely different different weapon now. What was it before? Say it again. Uh, Twelve shots rending. Also twenty four inches, I think. So the whole um, right now it's two attacks plus three rending. Exactly. So okay. it lost ten shots, but gained plus three. Uh, I, I mean. It's for me the similar problem I see. Uh, it's similar with the how it's called the terror assassin from the human inquisition. He is also a blast and rending weapon. And with these kind of low attacks, it gets even more swingy. So either you roll with the blast weapon with six, then all three hits are rending. Rending. Yeah. And and that's uh, to be honest, I don't like that. That yeah. Because it's very luck dependent the other one is more reliable it's it's still a bit of luck in there but and i i i think it's of course more powerful you have 12 potential hits either uh, whether it's what just one enemy model mm. or it's 12 any enemy model so um and that's a problem i had with this kind of guns. I think uh, rending in, is a, a good ability in general, especially if you have a lot of attacks. Mm -hmm. It's a whole purpose weapon. You mm -hmm. can shoot it at um, big squads if you have a lot of attacks, like the exo squad uh, exosuit has. And you can even shoot it at elite units. Like um, if you had rolled 12 dice, you maybe get normally you two sixes. two sixes yeah but sometimes you get like three which means um he has to throw yeah he, he can uh, delete um or kill an elite guy with like defense two up and uh tough three yeah like something like a or, destroyer or something yeah, it's something pretty like reliable destroyer. to kill one yeah yes and um that's not the purpose of the gun you either Normally, you ha should have like a, a clear target what you want to shoot, either elite uh, units or tank-like units or um, big squads. And mm. they so blast for big squads, deadly for um, tanks and tough guys. But if you have like a lot of rending shots, um, you can shoot like at anything. Mm. The, yeah, another yeah. big another example is uh, because I play him the Riptide from the Tau Coalition, which had like twenty four shots AP one rending. You can shoot at anything and do a lot of damage. <laughs> but but you also paid the price for it. Okay, so yeah, that's true. It's more expensive now. The gravity guns got cheaper, so you have a cheap loadout for the exosuits. But you know. I is it is it so bad to have to have a multi multi purpose weapon or does everything have to be uh, rock paper scissors? No, of course not. Um, so uh, this is the question. I, I think it, it it the the trend was to go in that direction. If you remember the old how was it called? It wasn't called blast rule. It was something else. But the old blast rule it was uh, you just roll one hit roll. And you do that much damage as the number behind the the blast. So uh, you all remember the old um, yes. um, weapon from from this artillery of human defense force, where you had one roll. If you hit, you do twelve twelve hits. It mm -hmm. wasn't it wasn't limited by the number of enemy models. It was just twelve yeah. hits. Yeah. So that was also a multi-purpose weapon. At at the beginning, I was. I didn't like that at all. Why should a huge missile was shouldn't be able to destroy um, a, a huge tank or something? It mm. didn't make sense. But from the perspective of this multi uh, 
um, uh, how it's called, rock, paper, scissors, yeah. uh, it, it makes sense. And on that point, I, I think it's to, to the better to have to go with every weapon in that direction. And yeah, yeah. I don't like to have one option for everything because then you then there's a trend to take this multi-purpose units all the time. You have to think about your your army composition and so on by thinking about what weapons you take. And mm. uh, I think it makes a game more interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a viewpoint, and I agree. I'm just a bit uh, mad because it nerfed my cool <laughs> unit. <laughs> but, but did it really nerf it? Uh, I yeah, mean, they it got, did. Yes, we, they um, they don't cost as much as before. I think. Yeah, but I like to like hunt a tough six transporters with it, which is now not possible anymore with blast. Three, yeah, two maybe. shots, one will miss, the other one, yeah, you won't get a rending. So, yeah. Also, I, I'm, I'm a fluff bunny, you know this, and mm. the gravity gun originally is like cr crushing your armor together, like creating some kind of um, um, implosion inside, and then it crushes together. And always, I always thought like a lot of shots and rending fits this better than some kind of explosion, which is more represented by blast. But this is just 40k. This is just, I mean, it can work differently here. So yeah, it's... I mean, you could go hunt, still go hunt uh, transport um, transporters with the twin laser cannon with you... another loadout exactly. But yeah, I, you, you know, I. I built the models, I painted the models. They now have shiny green. Yeah, yeah but, but I know, I know, I know. Yeah. But um, uh, on, on the other hand, to be honest, I, what when talking about this this new kind of how the gravity gun is, is modeled, I don't like, as I said before, the combination of having blast with a special rule. So, yeah. So it's also with a uh, plague. Uh, uh, plague disciples tanks these mortal mortals they ha have on the top yeah they have blast three poison it's it's such a it was two attacks i think it's such mm. a swingy luck, weapon it, yeah it's such a swing weapon it's just yeah uh, there i agree you shouldn't combine this because there you so depend on the sixes to make it really work okay exactly. i i would say I'm fine with the gravity guns like this, but I prefer to have a reliable AP instead of rending. Give it AP2, give it AP3, price it accordingly, and I'm more happy with it. That I can agree with, but... Because with two shots rending, nah. Yeah, I can agree with that, but the, the overall theme of the gravity is rending. So it was. They need it, no, it still is. I think every gravity uh, gun has rending special. Yeah, yeah. But yes. I think if you change the general topic of the gravity gun, you can ah, also okay. change the rending yeah. rule into something different. That's true, but then it wouldn't differ from uh, some other other weapons that the yes. Metal Brothers have. I, yes. you, Global they... perspective, yes, I yeah. agree. Yeah, and most of the time people will probably go to the plasma cannon but if they don't have the option of the plasma cannon then then they have to stick either they want a multi-shot or a multi um, member unit uh, weapon with blast uh, so uh, for the gravity gun then maybe have ap2 or the less cannon if they don't have the option of the plasma cannon they don't can interfere with each other. yeah so, yeah so in all honesty, gravity should probably, if you go lore-wise, be the same as the machine cool weapons with radiation um, or the new warp rule. If the defender rolls a one with an armor safe, should deal additional damage. At least lore-wise, it would be yeah. more fitting to yeah, um, yeah. gravity, I think. Yeah because it affects the armor. But yeah, it's weapon design. They will all want to um, to have all the weapons in a specific style. They should uh, differ from each other. So they just decided gravity guns are like this now. So yeah. yeah. 
But this leads me to another tiny side topic. Maybe we can quickly, quickly talk about this. Nothing to do with uh, 2.50 changes, but weapon design. What do you think about flamer weapons? That's not a nice transition, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so flame weapons do have always always have six attacks or 12 attacks, depending on the kind of flame weapon. But they don't scale with the amount of models you are able to hit. When you shoot a flamethrower at a unit of 10, you can hit six yeah. models. When you shoot a flamethrower at a single model, you can do six damage to him. Yeah. Which doesn't make sense because the flames just don't multiply in his face. They, yeah. So this is why other systems had um, um, like a flame cone shaped template you put over it to prevent this. So I'm not that happy when I think fluff wise about flame weapons. What do you it's, think about this? If I, I go first. Okay. Uh, so that's what I, I always thought. So when I'm thinking again, human defense force, I even think about taking these tanks with the two flame weapons, so top gun as well as so turret weapon as well as front weapon yeah. with flamers, then I have 12 shots, AP1. I could even use that probably uh, for anti-tank purposes. It's yes. not that good. I could, I could push the uh, AP by one with the right hero close by. So mm -hmm. it, it's, again, we're going in that direction of this multi multi-purpose weapon and i agree uh, i don't I, I think the flamer would be the perfect example to use a blast rule <laughs> why instead not? of many shots yeah exactly make it uh two attacks blast three without any ap so that for yeah, totally makes close sense, yes. close range <laughs> yeah yeah i just i can't agree <laughs> uh, you I can't mean, agree more. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't agree more. I think it's a... Uh... Yeah, so, so yeah, here my request before you change my so much loved gravity cannons, <laughs> change flamers <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And but, especially but... because blast brewers ignore cover. Um, which that, makes sense for which flamers Which normally too, yeah. makes sense because uh, the whole purpose of flamethrowers in like World War two was to uh, hit bunkers and to flame them up yeah what what i just just as a brainstorming idea i was thinking about flamers and of course there's always the comparison to to other systems like 40k <laughs> and and what troubled me always with with units with low quality is that they also not hit with the flamers even though it's kind of a auto hit unit or weapon it should be why yeah. don't it would be maybe the idea to do something similar like, like sniper as an example yeah that these weapons hit easier or or by a certain number so you say okay if we reduce the flamer range really to to 12 six or six inches. inches even and they say flamer two plus and every or three plus and you always hit on a three plus with a and put in blast in it in additionally then you have kind of uh neg negated this quality issue mm. then and it makes flamers i think quite useful yeah drop it drop them out of vehicles and you really are quite sure that you will flame the the enemy unit you are, you are attacking yeah that's a pretty good idea. Um, the problem with like the same as sniper is um, sniper. Uh, you pay the cost for the quality, but you shoot on a two up. So the only benefit you have of a high quality is a morale check. You can pass it easier, but still pay the cost for the quality three plus in shooting and the same would be true for flamethrowers like um, the battle brothers shooting with a three plus flamethrower um, pay a lot of quality to shoot mm. better but um, conscripts uh, of quality six plus having a flamer shoot on three plus two uh, would be more beneficial for them to have this weapon 
it, it it would be probably expensive i don't know so it needs to be calculated if you reduce the number of attacks from six to two and put in blast three or even maybe blast six and just one attack or that i, sh I think that should be dependent of if it's a flamethrower or a heavy flamethrower um but uh, overall i think that's a very good idea yeah it probably we should be that way and not like six attacks or 12 attacks <laughs> yeah uh, by the way when we are talking about the sniper rule if i may add one thing on <laughs> which we had on the topic i was always thinking why make sniper plus uh quality two plus why don't why doesn't the sniper rule just add two to your quality so uh um uh um Infantry man of the human defense force would hit on a three plus, maybe reduce some cost, maybe bring some in some differences and so on. So it brings plus plus two. But maybe it's also simpler for the game designers if they <laughs> calculate the points of every unit to have it just as a two plus instead of adding plus yep, two, two. But on the other hand, we also have rules like good shot or bad shot. So I think it would be possible to have a flamer well, actually, specific. Yeah. Sorry. To have um, a flamer shot. specific or a sniper specific thing according to your current um, quality. So go on. Um, but, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, I didn't want to interrupt you there. Good shot makes you shoot at four plus, regardless of the quality you have. Yes, that's a problem I have too. A good shot should be plus one to hit in range draws and. Bad shot should be minus one to hit. Yeah, yeah. Shot. I just wanted to add that there are several rules that change your um, your quality for a specific thing like shooting. So I think it's not a problem to add another special rule because we already have a lot of them. So just True, yeah. but I. I don't really like this decision, um, especially I'm not sure if they interfere with it. Like, um, for example, if you hit on a four plus, um, you still get minus one to hit if you shoot at a stealth unit. Um, so why not make it the plus one to hit instead? Uh, the, the good shoot. Good shot. Yeah. We're talking <laughs> a lot about rules that Ah, not real. So we're making up stuff. What would be better? What would be ha ha ha? But as this is the strategy and uh, tactics podcast, we should talk about what is really there to make the best of it, the best use of it. So we still have time for one topic, maybe. And maybe one printer in the background that goes. Oh, you can hear the printer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, he's printing the next army lists because uh, he's very well prepared. So we should pro talk about Aegis, maybe? Oh, yeah, Aegis. <laughs> but it's a big topic. Maybe maybe next time? Oh, OK. Yeah. Like you... I did a lot of uh, calculations and theory crafting, but it's a, it's a big topic. I think it will change uh, not the game, but the faction that uses it. Uh, so Knight Brothers. <laughs> So uh, what topic would you wanted to talk about? I, I, I was asking you if you have something oh, okay. small we could just squish into this podcast episode. Do you have something? So I, I'll exactly. have an idea, as I suggested to you guys before. So um, the topic about aircraft. So um, okay. yeah, I'm interesting. currently looking up uh if the aircraft rule itself changed i don't think so but a lot of the aircraft itself changed with the new um update so mm -hmm. i don't think you guys did use too much aircraft patrick you you used them maybe once or twice i used them once exactly yeah at, so at this point can you blend in uh the aircraft rules no <laughs> yeah, we do it. Makes <laughs> makes makes totally sense. Yeah, to yes. yeah. So everybody uh, knows what we're talking about, because um, obviously aircraft isn't uh, very much used, and I don't know why. Because it's a pretty cool rule. It's uh, special, 
it gives you a lot of tools to to play around with, which uh, differ from the normal uh, gameplay. So yeah, I think I may know why. Uh, at least to me, they weren't really appealing. The big problem I have with the aircraft is they can't interact with models or terrain, and they can't see subjectives. And the thing is that you don't really have that much unit. And if you have a whole lot of points into units that can't see subjectives, for me, it's a big downside because um, most of the time aircrafts are tanky, especially do, uh, through their um, innate rule, giving minus 12 inch range and minus two hydros. They are yeah. and most also, of the time they have like tech, tough ticks or higher. Yeah, also First. yeah, two up defense because vehicles, right? And you pay for yes. that. That's true. Yes, uh, so they are pretty durable, and normally with durable units, you want to claim an objective and maybe sit there. But aircrafts can't do that, mm -hmm. and so they are the whole purpose of them is to shoot at stuff and um, not get shot. So they get the defense, uh, yeah. high defense. Um, yeah, for me, they weren't really appealing because of that reason. I want to have mm. another unit on the game, uh, on the board, which can interact with, who mm. can um, prevent enemy units from going a specific way or who can see these objectives and yes, uh, yes. To get cover or something like that. I see where you're going. I agree. It, first of all, it depends on... How much points you want to play? Let's say you play 1,500 points game. Sure, you want something useful for that points. But let's say we play 2,500. Then you can look at them for in a different perspective. Like they can also be transporters. Transporters often have the problem they get shot pretty easy because tough six or, yeah, you know. Yes. And then your unit inside is maybe pinned and yeah so with transport with uh, transport uh, aircraft you prevent this by taking away 12 inches of uh, range from enemy weapons um also uh terrain is is you you ignore you just ignore terrain which brings your unit embarked on your aircraft transport faster or easier to the target you you want to reach so i think they are very useful in bigger games even if they don't uh interfere with uh with uh, the board as as it is but for this purpose super useful yeah so True. so uh i completely agree with you so my experience was also as a transport they are as as we learned, they are just a one hit unit, so you can't re-embark when you disembark yeah. the unit. So exactly. But you are able to do an alpha strike. So you are able to fly in and directly attack. You have to plan well, mm -hmm. especially uh because of within Grim Dark Future you don't have a whole round, but you work with act activation. That means you have to set the direction of the airplane um before uh beforehand so e during deployment so you need to be sure that the aircraft in the end will be within six inches of an enemy to be able to disembark and attack because when disembarking from a transport your your maximum movement is reduced to six inches as we know so yeah yeah so so this needs really good planning and the enemy can can um mislead you there and then you are uh you are you rather quickly have to activate the aircraft if you aren't sure that the enemy will stay there so that it 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 can be tricky but um yeah as i said on the other hand you have the um um uh, alpha strike option with the transport mm. on the other hand i also use just just attacking aircrafts and i really like that they normally hit hard from my perspective, relatively mm -hmm. hard, not the hardest unit at all, but they really, they can really cripple unit. They can do quite some damage. And as you said, 
I don't see them at that tanky because of tough six, but this this aircraft rule reduces the range and the hit modifier, so that makes them hard to to yes, hit. Yes, yes, so, yes. But most of them have tough six that can drop quite fast. Okay. Yeah. So I but, agree with. Oh, sorry. You no, finish. just uh, I will. Uh, but um, I also have a comment about the new ruling because they have. I just looked it up. Have, have changed quite a lot. But, but before I do that, Johannes, please, please let us know what you wanted to say. I agree with you that uh, if they have the transport capability, they are much more useful. That's true. But I think playing against them is kind of frustrating for some. If you have like a melter gun with 12 inch range, but six or something, you can't actually hit them. Mm -hmm. You can shoot at them. And that's pretty yeah, yeah annoying if you um, fight against them. I. I personally didn't play them, and I haven't played against one yet, I think. But just knowing I can't attack these, um, and all my guns are like very short-ranged against them, yeah, kind of annoying. I, I think it's it comes with the rock, paper, scissors. There are a lot of lock-on weapons. You, they are meant to be anti-aircraft also, and... But you the range a, still got does get reduced. Not not lock on lock on. Oh, lock on. Okay, lock on is reduced. Okay, no. lock on uh, prevents reduction of hit. So negative hit modifiers as well as hit, hit negative range yes. modifiers. Lock on says ah, okay. ignores all negative modifiers to hit rolls yeah, and range. That. So yeah, they are supposed to be anti aircraft exactly. Okay. Now you can go on uh, what the what changed. Okay, so so as I said, what I want to say the the the, the aircraft you paid quite a hefty price with the new rules, as I see. Um, so comparing, I think human defense force and robot legions. I'm not quite sure about the the havoc brother. I think it got slightly up, but especially on the robot legions, the aircrafts got quite more expensive so both type of aircrafts grew almost 100 points or more by aircraft so we for the transport you pay almost 300 points without the regeneration upgrade and mm. for the i know that's the old routes it's now almost 400 points oh, and for 400. the no 350 350 and for the doom fighter the uh, for the Doom Fighter, the attack one instead of three, four, three thirty or so before you pay now four sixty, so mm. about or more than hundred points more. But what changed? What made them more expensive? Or did they just get the point up uh, great um, um, point increase? So no, they they are not more killy. They are exactly the same from the weapon they are just 100 points more expensive so i guess but aircraft nothing tool, changed aircraft nothing tool changed. just got more expensive exactly okay. I, I was never that much into it so i don't know the prices before but i know about this one battle brothers aircraft with uh, transport ability and it costs 545 points in the basic loadout um, and you really have to think about it if you want to use it. I mean, yeah. you do, you're not going to use it in a thousand five hundred points game. Never ever. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. One third of you, and and also with the normal tournament format of two thousand points, you really have to think about that you want to yeah. use it or not. I think it's they got quite uh, quite hefty on the price side. I think yes. maybe a bit too much. Yes. So it seems like Johannes just left. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand did. as I did last time. Yeah, this is yeah annoying at some point. All this all this nerd talk. So I I think we just um, we we just use this opportunity to oh hey there he is back. Okay, my internet connection just vanished. Yeah, we I, I just was about to say we use this opportunity that you left. To, to wrap up the episode and end here because it's a quite long one already. Uh, I thought you to insult.
And he left again. And there he is again. <laughs> yeah, so the rest of the evening we play hide and seek with Johannes. So thank you for watching this episode. Thank you for listening. Thank, thank you, you very much. For did you did you say them to subscribe? subscribe? Leave a comment in the section below. Hit the bell for notification. And if you want us to talk about a specific topic, yes, let us know in the comments. Just drop it in the comments. I, I think just uh, somebody left a comment that he wanted to talk about the factions. Yes. We all agree that we will cover that later on, but we will want to yes. really going... invest time in the different factions. Yes. And yes. Not... Also, also yeah. wait for the complete rework not that we talk about a faction and like two days later it, it gets changed so let's just cover then, the basics first and then the factions i agree i think then we will make a kind of in-depth guide or not guide but in-depth talk tactic talk about the specific factions yeah TikTok talk TikTok talk tech tick tick tactic in-depth <laughs> talk tick you could you could do an in-depth tactic on TikTok. <laughs> Would be funny. Tactic TikTok. Tactic tactic. <laughs> okay. So again, thank you all for listening and for the great support, all the comments, all the views. We we really appreciate it. So we do. I hope we see you next time. See you oh. next time. Bye-bye. Uh, hear you next time again. Or oh, hear us next well, time. Well, uh, we are going to see us. Yeah. We are see, going to see us too. Yeah. So you're lucky that you don't have to see us. <laughs> <laughs> we always record naked. That's uh, OK. <coughs> Enough. <laughs> OK. Leave that in, please. Yeah, I, I leave that in. OK. OK, so see you guys. Bye. See you.